Okay. Hey everybody, this is Rob in Bakersfield, California. Heading out on the 2013 Sportster 72. Yeah, it's been a while since I've ridden her. And yes, it does not look like your stock Sportster 72. Has a four and a half gallon custom Sportster gas tank on it. Spring seed, DK Customs 636V Outlaw Intake. Screaming Eagles with the baffles removed and DK Customs TTIs inside. Those are the major changes, along with the Cobra FI2000R. Now, here's my new summer helmet. I forget what make it is, it was just some off-brand I got at the local uh, Victory dealer. But as you can see, it comes down further than your standard shorty half helmet and it has a zip on side curtain here's my mic setup somebody wanted to see it that's about the best way I can show you what I did is I took a piece of 12 gauge house wire the exact length I needed to run from here I'm there put the mic along it put on some heat shrink and shrunk it down I now have my own home built flexible boom mic that plugs right into the back of the Drift Ghost. Okay. So, that'll give you a little bit about the bike, my new helmet, the mic setup, camera setup, and I hope that answers your questions. Yeah. I guess I could have stood in front of the mirror in the house and shown you a little better, but you get the idea. You know, Okay, well, let's get to this week's Throwback Thursday. There has been an awful lot on social media about police brutality and cops using excessive force. So, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Because way back when I was a cop, people still complained about police brutality and excessive force. Of course, back in those days, we basically used uh, a chokehold, which was then refined to the carotid artery restraint. But because people were dying from the specific gr group of people were dying from the chokehold, they banned it and went to the carotid artery restraint hold. We used to also have our batons, or what was always referred to as a nightstick. Sometimes you'd have to beat the crap out of people with that. And they get broken arms, broken legs, have to take them to the hospital. And occasionally officers had to shoot people. Now, our department used such pussy ammo that most of the time the suspects didn't get killed. They just got injured. Now, ever since the big bank robbery shootout in LA, most police departments have gone to better weapons, better ammo, and now when a cop shoots somebody, they die. Here's the thing. Every one of these cases that I have looked at before they start editing the cell phone videos and everything, when you see the first footage and stuff, you can see every one of these guys were committing a crime, so the cops had a legal reason to be talking to them, arresting them. Every one of them resisted arrest. Every one of them, uh, cops, went through their stages of trying to physically manhandle them, which didn't work. Tried the stun guns, which didn't work. And so they resorted to drawing their weapon. And every one of these so-called great citizens that had criminal records as long as my arm would reach for their weapon. 
Of course, now all the videos you see, that part's all been edited out. The part where the cops are telling them, don't reach for the gun, the guy reaches for the gun, and he gets shot. Now, why the media does that, that's anybody's, you know, guess. You can come up with lots of different conspiracy theories. Whether Obama wants to create a race war so he can call martial law and have the UN troops move in and take over before he goes out of office. Or is it just people who are dumb shits that don't follow directions, that are criminals, that reach for a weapon when they're told not to, and the officer resorts to shooting them, and they die. That's a choice that that crook made. That officer was forced into that position. Back in the day, I had several t instances where I was forced into almost taking somebody's life. But in each case, I risked my own life and instead of shooting that person when they reached for the gun, I stepped in, kicked their ass, physically disarmed them, and arrested them. Did people say I used excessive force? Hell yeah, they did. And anytime you see a cop beating the shit out of somebody, you think, oh my God, look at that cop, he's beating that poor guy up. Well, they don't have no idea that that poor guy he's beating up is reaching for a gun in his pocket. And if he gets that gun out of his pocket, he's not going to hesitate to shoot you. And then you're going to be forced to shoot him. Which is something I never wanted to have to do. Far from what a lot of people think, cops do not go to work every day thinking, Oh boy, I'm going to get to shoot somebody today. They're just like me. They go to work hoping, I don't, I hope I don't have to shoot anyone today. And I hope I come home uninjured and alive at the end of my shift. So all this bullshit about police brutality and excessive force and shooting an unarmed guy because he didn't have the gun in his hand. Well, if he had his hand in his pocket and the gun was in the pocket, you could still shoot. If he's reaching for his gun, you can still shoot. You don't have to wait. As a cop, you don't have to wait until he pulls the gun out and starts shooting at you and then return fire. That's bullshit. You have the right to protect your life and the lives of others around you. So I don't know where people get this notion that the cops have to wait until they're shot at before they can return fire. Unless they watch too goddamn much TV. So, that's my take on police brutality and excessive force. Has there been police brutality and excessive force in the past? I'm sure there has been. Will there be in the future? I'm sure there will be. If you think you got a better answer to it, go down to your local department, sign up, do the background investigation, pass the test, go through the academy, become a cop, and let's see how you handle when somebody tries to take your gun away from you out there on the street when you try to arrest them. Let's see how you handle it when somebody pulls a gun or a knife on you. Let's see how long you live. Well, that's about it for my rant for today. And someday I will go into those specific cases where I had the legal right or opportunity to shoot the suspect, but I didn't. Because I didn't want to be responsible for taking some dumb shit's life. Okay, see y'all next Thursday. Hope you liked my video. I know all of you out there that are anti-cops and think that they're all just picking on you and believe all this crap you're seeing on social media are probably going to thumbs down this and give me a bunch of your bullshit rhetoric. 
And you know what? I don't really care. You just keep thinking that way. Karma will come to bite you in the ass. No. Bye-bye. Time to ride.